Welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to show each individual step for how you add an older version of CleanFlight onto your computer. Now, we talked about this a little while ago when CleanFlight 2.0 came out, and that was causing pilots a lot of problems because it now based on beta flight code and because of that the graphical user interface the way it works is slightly different and it won't talk to older 1.x versions of clean flight it'll ask you to do an update now if you have lots of little quads then it probably is fine running the old version of clean flight and you don't necessarily want to go around upgrading everything just because clean flight says so if it's working you still want to be able to access those models change pids and change the settings so in that video that we did before, we talked at a high level about how you did it, but I've had lots and lots of people getting in a real pickle with each of the individual steps. And it, the other video does kind of rely on you having a certain level of expertise, uh, basic kind of computer knowledge. So in this video, I'm actually going to show each individual step for how you add another older version of the Clean Flight graphical user interface to your computer. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to download the software. Now, one of the things that I've seen a couple of pilots doing is what they're doing is they're coming into this the, the area, the GitHub, where all the bits and pieces are here, going into the clean flight bits, finding the releases, and then trying to download zip files from the bottom of this big list. This is not where you need to download it from. This is one of the common mistakes that people are making. This is actually the version of CleanFlight itself. This is all of the files that go up to make the hex files that get put onto flight controllers. It's the configurator that we want. So I've updated the link in the previous video. I'm also gonna add the link on here as well. What you need to do is click on CleanFlight. Make sure that you've clicked on the CleanFlight configurator because it's these releases that you're actually after, not the ones with all of the boards listed underneath. So here's all the versions of the Clean Flight Configurator. That's the latest one that's actually installed on my machine, and once it's on, it kind of updates automatically. Uh, the older versions won't do that. So this is the one that we're going to add, 1.2.4. So we're going to download this zip file onto our computer. Once that's downloaded, I'm going to right click in Google. Here is the zipped folder and I'm going to say copy and then I'm going to go into the desktop and I'm going to paste. That's going to copy all of those files onto my desktop. So now there's Clean Flight Configurator and there are all the licenses and bits and pieces that you need. So that's on my desktop. Okay, so now we've got that folder on the desktop, and I'd probably put it somewhere else to be honest. I'm just using the desktop because it's easy for the demo. I'd stick it in somewhere where you won't accidentally damage it or delete it. Next thing we need to do then is add this into the Chrome bits and pieces itself. Go into the right hand corner, select more tools, select extensions. This will show you all the extensions that you currently have, and surprise, surprise, most of mine are all about uh, radio control vehicles and clean flight and beta flight and KISS. We're going to click on Load Unpack Extension. We're going to navigate to the desktop, and then we're just going to select the top level of the directory that we put on there, Clean Flight Configurator. Uh, we're not going to click on anything else. We don't have to. We just have to select Clean Flight Configurator, and once it's selected that, click OK, and it will automatically appear in here. Make sure it's clicked on as enabled. Uh, make sure you've got developer mode clicked as well, because that's the, re the way it will appear. Once you've got that, if you then restart the applications, you'll find that the new version is listed. And if you click it, there is version 1.24, we can now connect to our older models and modify and update them without any problems. You might find that when you start Google again, it comes up and tells you to disable developer extensions. Um, the reason that it's doing that is because this here uh, is kind of acting like a developer 
extension because it's downloaded and been run locally like you would for a developer. So if you want to use this older version, just make sure that you've got that developer mode turned on. If you accidentally turn it off and then you want to re-enable it later on, that's very straightforward. You just come into here again and to get into here again, you go more tools, extensions, and then to make sure you've clicked developer mode and then you'll have it. So hopefully that helps those of you that have got a little bit stuck and by showing each individual step, it'll help you get the older version of the graphical user interface for CleanFly onto your computer so you can continue to fly the older versions of CleanFly without getting stuck. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organised set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes you fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there, and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.